This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 341, Pitching Investors in the Post-COVID World, by Dr. Jeff Cornwall of drjeffcornwall.com. And I'm your narrator, Dan. Happy Monday to you. And if you're here in the US, happy Labor Day. This is where I read to you from some of the best blogs on entrepreneurship, and I do that every single day, including weekends and holidays like today. And now we're gonna get right to our post for today from Jeff Cornwall and start optimizing your life. Pitching Investors in the Post-COVID World by Dr. Jeff Cornwall of drjeffcornwall.com. Pitching to investors has always been like playing whack-a-mole. Connecting with the right investor at the right time can be quite tricky. Now, add all the impacts from COVID-19. Angel investors all but disappeared in the second quarter amid the pandemic chaos. Venture capital firms became much more cautious and conservative in their funding, trying to mitigate the risk amid almost infinite uncertainty. More than we've seen in many years, traditional savings skyrocketed as both people and companies fled to cash for financial security. Many angels who were still investing focused on shoring up companies already in their portfolios with additional capital. Bright spots emerged. Toward the latter half of 2020 and moving into 2021, certain segments emerged as investor favorites. Health tech, fintech, clean tech, edtech, and e-commerce are seeing a continued increase in deal flow. The success of Zoom is making deals that offer better efficiency in business-to-business transactions a new focus of investors as well. Deals with strong elements of sustainability in the business model are seeing increased attention. However, overall, it seems that investors are moving from hot industries and industry sectors to a much more targeted form of investing. As the world is disrupted from COVID and the economic crisis, investors are now focusing on a broader range of deals that focus on specific problems arising from the sudden changes in our world. Investors are seeking opportunities that fit what they see as the new normal. Even if it takes a bit of pitching gymnastics, try to highlight any COVID overlay in your business. Zoom becomes the new investment marketplace. And then there's Zoom. The events of 2020 brought an abrupt end to localized startup pitch events. Gone are the days of live demo days. The ritual of making the rounds from VC boardroom to VC boardroom to VC boardroom are no longer happening. Gone are the massive investment conferences. Everything's now on Zoom. The entrepreneurship world quickly adapted to the new normal of raising funding. It had to happen, even with COVID, as entrepreneurs still need funding and angels are still looking for fun deals. Inboxes now fill up with Eventbrite invitations to Zoom pitch events. Meetup groups now facilitate bringing together investors and entrepreneurs via Zoom. No more standing in front of a room full of investors and entrepreneurs. Now entrepreneurs pitch into the little green dot on their computer. Just as there was an unwritten set of rules, expectations, and norms for live pitching, we now are seeing a consensus on Zoom pitching protocol take form. Pitching on Zoom. Some things about pitching haven't changed. You need to be compelling and concise, as you only have the first few minutes to connect on a pitch. You need to look and act the part. Dress well. Business casual is generally the norm. Since you no longer have body language to communicate your confidence and enthusiasm, you need to show this through your voice. Here are a few tips specific to Zoom pitches that I've been hearing from both experienced entrepreneurs and angel investors. Number one, make sure you have good lighting. Natural light is best. Avoid any backlighting that may come from windows and bright lights. Two, make sure you have a strong internet signal and have a backup plan. Three, technology matters. Invest in a high quality webcam if yours on your computer isn't very good. The same goes for your mic. When recording classes for my university students this past summer, I was blown away by how much better the video and audio were when I upgraded from my 2015 MacBook Pro to a 2019 model. I went back and re-recorded all the lectures I'd done on my old MacBook Pro. It made that much of a difference. Four, calm yourself before you get on Zoom. Most of us do this before a live pitch, but forget how important it is to be centered when hopping on Zoom for a pitch. And five, don't pitch continuously for more than about five minutes at a time. Break your pitch up and go off of screen share to answer questions and to help keep them engaged. Pitch Deck 2.0. Even the pitch deck has evolved post-COVID. You should have two versions of the same pitch deck prepared. First, entrepreneurs still need to prepare a traditional pitch deck for live pitches on Zoom. The second is what's being called an investor pitch deck, an annotated pitch deck, or a standalone pitch deck. There's still no consensus on the preferred term. 
It should be organized exactly like the deck used for your live pitches, except that most of the slides will be split in two. The one side includes the same graphics used in the oral pitch. The other side includes a short narrative, including what you would be saying about that slide during a live pitch. Use the widescreen format for your deck to make plenty of room for the two sides. There should be no more than 150 words per narrative section on each slide on the narrative side, with the ideal word count being about 50 to 100 words. There's no need to include the narrative side text on slides which are self-explanatory, such as financial summaries, timelines, and so forth. The split between the two sides should be about 40% for narrative and 60% for the graphic side. This is the version of the deck you want to send out to investors who want to preview your deal before meeting with you over Zoom. Think of it as an executive summary of your business plan with pictures. The good news into 2021. Deal flow is increasing as we enter into 2021. The strong market on Wall Street and cheap capital has buoyed investor confidence and their portfolios. We're seeing more angels get back into seed investing, which is outstanding news for startups. Unless COVID takes a nasty turn for the worse, what John Malden calls the gripping hand of the economy, things are looking up for a better year for startup entrepreneurs. You just listened to the post titled Pitching Investors in the Post-COVID World by Dr. Jeff Cornwall of drjeffcornwall.com. Growing up, entrepreneurship and small business was normal dinnertime conversation at the Cornwall household. This set the stage for a decades-long career pursuing entrepreneurial ventures and sharing his knowledge in the classroom. Jeff has spent more than 40 years as a serial entrepreneur. In the 1970s, he started several small businesses and was involved in various family ventures. In the late 1980s, following several years in academics, Dr. Cornwall co-founded Atlantic Behavioral Health Systems in Raleigh, North Carolina, and spent nearly a decade leading the company as president and CEO. After growing to more than 300 employees, he and his partners sold most of their healthcare holdings. After the sale, Dr. Cornwall decided it was time to return to the classroom to share his experience and knowledge with aspiring entrepreneurs. He's now the president and CEO of The Entrepreneurial Mind, and his blog was named one of the 100 best websites for entrepreneurs by Forbes magazine, so definitely check it out. You can come by drjeffcornwall.com for a lot more articles and content. But that does it for today here on Optimal Startup Daily. Hope you're having a happy Monday and start to your week and a happy holiday, Labor Day if you're here in the US. And I'll see you in tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits.